Chihuahua, and welcome to the 150th podcast of the NC Rowan County Anime Group. My name is Robert Clyde Allen. I'm the co-president of this club. Before I get started doing some reviews about some animes, I want to take the time to thank everybody who came to our November 20th meeting. Thank you. There was this one gentleman who drove all the way up from Charlotte. I think it was Charlotte. Not quite sure. But I had a wonderful time talking to him about the Smothers Brothers, Filmation, and also to uh, and Ghostbusters. Now, let me go on and try to get some anime reviewing here. This first movie I'm going to inter- tell you about is called Ghost in a Shell. Now, this is the original Ghost in a Shell movie. And I have a little history with this uh, movie in particular. Melody Moxley is a librarian who orders the DVDs and stuff for the Rowan Public Library. She one day came up to me and said, Robert, I'm thinking about buying the first Ghost in the Shell movie. She looked on the internet and said it had no rating on it. I said, Melody, you do not wish to buy this anime. She said, why? I told her automatically that this anime was very violent, it had nudity in it, and uh, it was a very complex storyline. Now, the animation in Ghost in the Shell is beautiful. And the direction is beautiful, but this is not for a little child to watch. Had a parent took this home and stuck it in a VCR thinking they were going to get a kid-friendly anime feature, they would be very upset and it would have caused a lot of difficult problems. So that's why I stepped in and said no. The first animated series we ever picked up in the Rowan Public Library was Sister Princess. And that's a lot better than Ghost in the Shell as far as a family oriented uh, TV series. Now, let me move on a bit. This was put out by Media Blaster. This is called Cosmic Warrior Zero, and it is part of the Captain Harlock storyline. The animation is not all that great, but the plot is beautifully done. The music is okay, but like I said, I have a problem with the animation. It feels very stiff. It could have been drawn a lot better. If you go and you compare the animation that was done, let's say, by Madhouse Studios when they did Captain Hallock, The Legend Returns, it is beautiful, where if you looked at this one, it just doesn't hold up too well. Recommended age for Cosmic Warrior Zero would have to be the age of at least 16 up. The reason why there is nudity in there, and that is one of the reasons why you don't want to let a little kid watch this. It's very violent in some parts. Now for the next one, this is also going to be a very mature anime, and this is called Sorcerer Hunters. Now, Tiffany Grant does do the voice work in Sorcerer Hunter. Recommended age for this would be 16 plus. It's a quest sort of story. You have the good guys going after evil sorcerers in about back in the Middle Ages or feudal era, and it's funny at parts. I did enjoy it. On a scale of one to ten. It's at least at least a nine story. I'm going to take away one point because there were one or two scenes that go like they could have done that a lot better. But that's my informed opinion. And if you disagree, that's fine. For my next one, I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk about the Excel Saga. Now, I heard a very interesting story about the Excel Saga before I get started doing a review. It, AD Films, when it was around, went to this company that usually does their translation over to uh, Japanese to English. They said, okay, we'd like to get this transferred. They said, yes, they could do it, but it's going to cost you extra because this is going to be a very hard thing to try to translate into English. Now, co-president Tim Will one time described uh, Excel Saga like this. Keishi Miro meets the cast of Saturday Night Live on a set. I have an explanation about the XL Saga. I called it Anime's version of Monty Python on Acid. And that is how I explain the XL Saga. It's a very wacky comedy. Recommended age for the XL Saga. I would have to say at least for the age of 18 because of the mature themes that run through it. Now, it, the interesting thing about the XL Saga, it is funny. It is very wacky. And the director did a very nice job of it. He directed also to, I think, uh, a lot of other... Well, he directed The Wildflower for sure. I remember that. 
but the Excel Saga is not for little kids to watch, but it is a very wacky and funny anime if you like that type of stuff. Our next meeting will be December the 4th. It will be our Christmas party and our anniversary party. And we're going to be showing Dark Side Blues and the Kishin Core. Also too, in January, the 7th through the 9th is Ikaman Bashi or Ikaman Khan. It will be held at the Marriott Shaw Executive Park. Tom Horvick is one of the guests. I will be there too doing panels and please feel free to ask me questions at my panels or if you see me in the hallway stop to and talk to me. Presidents of Anime Club, please bring flyers and please take the time to talk to me. I'd love to hear what your clubs are up to these days. Also too, January the 15th we'll be meeting again in front of the Books of Million at 5 o'clock at 5.30 we're going to be going to watch The Melody of Oblivion. Wendy Thomas and Johnny Youngbush do do voice work in that anime. It was put out by Jenny on. Also too, in February, the 4th through the 6th is What the Hell Con at Guilford College, free and open to the public. And I'm hoping to take some of the members of the NC Rowan County Anime Group up there and have a wonderful time. Also too, February the uh, 19th, we'll be meeting again in front of the Books of Million at 5 o'clock at 5.30. We're going to go and watch Gantz. That is a very science fiction story, very mature, not for little kids to be watching, very violent. Also to Greg Ayers, Lucy Christian, and Christopher Ayers do do uh, voice work in this animated series. It was originally distributed by AD Films. I think right now Funimation has the rights uh, putting out Gantz. So this is it for now, and I wish you a very good day. Goodbye.